Tonight, the interview breaks online sales records for Sony. Hackers say fingerprints can be copied from photographs. And the security measures that the NSA hates the most. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 244 for Monday, December 29th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7, with integrations from Getty Images, Google Apps, new templates, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter the offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Hello, everyone. I'm Sarah Lane, and I've gained 10 pounds since we last spoke. Let's get right into the tech feed. Sony has announced that its controversial movie, The Interview, was downloaded or rented online more than 2 million times and has racked up over $15 million in sales. Sony decided to release the film online after pulling it from theaters prior to its December 25th release date. A source tells Business Insider that the vast majority of rentals and downloads came from either Google Play or YouTube. The movie was still shown in around 300 independent movies movie theaters across the U.S. after several major movie theater chains refused to show it. The interview was also pirated an estimated 1.5 million times in its first two days, according to Torrent Freak. After an outage that lasted for several days, the PlayStation Network started booting back up last night. PSN inconveniently went down on Christmas Day, allegedly due to a cyber attack. And in its most recent status update, Sony's PSN site says the network is still not fully restored. Microsoft's Xbox Live also went down on Christmas Day. Sorry, gamers. Although it returned online later that night. The cyber attack group Lizard Squad has taken credit for bringing down both services using a distributed denial of service attack. Europe's largest association of computer hackers, the Chaos Computer Club, has made a bold claim that it can re reproduce human fingerprints from photos that show fingers at the 31st annual Chaos Computer Club convention in Hamburg, Germany. Jan Chrysler, who goes by the name Starbug, demonstrated how he copied the thumbprint of German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen and how fingerprints can be copied from people at public events by using a, quote, standard photo camera. Now, because these fingerprints could be used for biometric authentication, Starbug says... After his talk, he believes, quote, politicians will presumably wear gloves when talking in public. The full talk, which is in German, is available on YouTube. If you want to know more about how we should all be scared. ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley reports that Microsoft is building a new browser codenamed Spartan, which will not be Internet Explorer 12, instead an entirely new browser. Spartan is said to look and feel more like Chrome or Firefox and will support extensions. Sources tell Foley that Windows 10... At least the desktop version of Windows 10 will ship with both Spartan and IE 11 and that Spartan will be available for both desktop and mobile versions of Windows 10 as well. All right, let's talk about Snoops, you know, like the NSA and other people who want to know things about you to join me in talking about this is John Fingus, the associate editor at Engadget. Hey, John. Hey, nice to speak to you again. Well, nice to see you too. And thanks for joining us after, uh, after a, what it sounds like kind of a balmy ho holiday that you had up in Canada. Yeah, it was kind of hilarious. I mean, like it was about uh, well above freezing for like several days. So like most of the <laughs> snow from the past few weeks is just like melted right away. Well, it's above almost like fall. freezing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, it, you know, what's up is down. You never know anymore. It rains in <laughs> California, so it's I don't know. Yeah. All right, you wrote an article. Uh, it's got a great title. Here are the security measures the NSA spies hate. The most. Now, this is based on a, a leak, a new leak from Edward Snowden's files. This is his many files that kind of keep showing up. <laughs> that there are a number of ways that somebody who had the wherewithal to get around the NSA could do so, and not just the NSA, but really anybody who wanted to sn sniff out data on people. So, what are the security measures that spies can't get around? It, well, a lot of it is basically th things that are like sort of encrypted end to end. Uh, like for example, there are like chat protocols. Like uh, off the record is a is a frequently cited one. Um, there are internet uh, like calling systems like uh, Z uh, ZRTP or, and there are some uh, email systems that are also pretty secure, like Zoho, for example. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, yeah, you know, basically anything that's got like, reasonably strong encryption. And uh, the, I guess the more you pile on top, like the uh, harder it gets to, to crack them. So you mentioned an email service like Zoho. You know, there are probably a lot of people watching, listening, saying, I've never heard of it, or how do I get that? I mean, why 
why, if it is uh, a safe way to go mostly undetected or completely undetected, why isn't it more widespread in use? Uh, well, I think, uh, frankly, like a lot of people just don't care that much mm. about about keeping their details secret. I mean, it's like the cl the classic excuses. Well, what you know, what do I have? To, like, I'm not too worried. What do I have to hide? Well, I mean, like as we've kind of found out, like like the surveillance agents are constantly scooping up things, and you don't know when something might become uh, might become um, useful to them. So uh, it's. And actually, also, I think people don't really understand that it's not just, I guess, surveillance agents for that matter. It's like, you know, criminals can get into your stuff and so on. So, like, I guess, simply speaking, like, people need to learn more about, like, just how potentially vulnerable their stuff is. You know, you mentioned criminals. Obviously, yeah, if you don't want criminals uh, snooping on your business, these are you know, some of these chat protocols. Uh, Tor, uh, obviously, an uh, anonymous network, are good options. But it goes both ways, right? I mean, if, if the NSA knows that the criminals know what the NSA hates as far as being able to snoop on, uh, on, on conversations and information, then they're equipped with the right tools to do the bad stuff, right? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's like a calculated balance. Like, you know, yes, so technically some, like, you know, some uh, evildoer could, could basically communicate, like, without, like, without, um, spies or the police be knowing what they're doing but at the same time like you know just because like some some bad people can do it doesn't mean that you should deny privacy and security for the vast majority of people so so it's one of those things where really in the balance it's probably worthwhile if you have these kinds of security measures than if you don't Absolutely. John Fingus is the associate editor over at Engadget and a frequent uh, visitor to TN2. Thanks so much for joining us, John. And remind folks before we let you go where they can keep up with all your great work. You're very welcome. And uh, I guess the best way to go to find out what I'm doing these days is to just go to Engadget.com. I post a lot, so I'm, I'm kind of hard to miss when you go there. You can also go to uh, John Fingus on Twitter. Excellent. Thanks so much, John. We will see you soon. You're welcome. Take care. Coming up, China is blocking Gmail in a different way this time and how the most Google search terms vary from U.S. state to U.S. state. But first, let's take a moment to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of TN2. You know, Squarespace recently launched a completely redesigned interface, Squarespace 7. If you haven't taken a look, it is a lot easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio Easier than ever, in fact. You've got live editing. That's basically making changes on one screen. You're not toggling between different views and preview modes or anything like that. You also have 14 new designs. Now, that now gives you over 30 templates to choose from right out of the gate that look beautiful. And Squarespace puts templates designed for specific professions right at your fingertips. You might be a musician. You're running a restaurant. Maybe you've got a wedding portfolio. E-commerce, that is all taken into consideration. In fact, there's a template called Flatiron. It's a really good one. It features a grid layout using multiple images where you can showcase your best work, whatever that work might be. You also have access to Getty images. So for $10 each, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty images and use them on your site. It's all, it's, uh, it's completely legit. E-commerce is available for all subscription plans as well. Plus Google Docs integration. That's Gmail and Sheets and Google Drive, Calendar. Of course, Squarespace has mobile apps, portfolio, note, metric, and blog mobile apps help you make changes from anywhere. And it's really easy to use. If you want help, though, and hey, sometimes we all need a little help, Squarespace has live chat and email support around the clock, 24-7. It's inexpensive. Plans start at just $8 per month. And Squarespace even takes care of hosting so you don't have to. And you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required. Just start building your website, and when you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T, and you will get 10% off. It's our gift to you. To begin using Squarespace 7, existing customers can go to the Settings tab and activate all their new features. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here and go anywhere. Okay, on to a few more stories that we're following on TN2 today. Google's email service, Gmail, is currently pretty much totally inaccessible in China. Now, although the gmail.com website has been blocked in China since June, along with every other Google service, it had remained usable in third-party email apps like Microsoft Outlook or Apple Mail. 
It appears now, though, that Gmail's IMAP, SMAP, and POP servers are now also fully blocked in China. And the only known way to access Gmail in China is through a VPN or proxy tool. So, you know, it's still pretty doable. But anyway. A U.S. bankruptcy court in Manhattan, New York, has allowed the now defunct video streaming service Aereo to auction off its TV streaming technology assets. This is according to court papers that were published on Friday. So Aereo can sell its assets after reaching an agreement with the big and broadcasters, CBS, NBC, ABC, and Fox, over the sale process. Now, under the agreement, Aereo will allow the broadcasters to attend the auction of the assets and provide them a weekly update on the status of the sale. Aereo filed for bankruptcy in November, which was five months after the U.S. Supreme Court said it violated broadcasters' copyrights by capturing live and recorded programs on miniature antennas and transmitting them to subscribers. Finally, real estate listing site Estately has compiled some kind of fun Google Trends data based on U.S. state, basically determining how searches for people or stories or controversies vary by region. I picked out some of my favorites. For example, in Arkansas, Mike Huckabee and Dancing with the Stars were quite popular. Over in Michigan, Macaulay Culkin dead, I guess he was rumored to be dead, and Kate Upton photos topped the search lists. In New Mexico, Zombies and LG G3 Phone were big hits. In Iowa, it was Flappy Bird and Richard Dawkins. But I think that Wisconsin wins this year. Top searches there, What is Tinder and Pabst Blue Ribbon. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. We're ending on a really good note here. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us with feedback at TN2 at twit.tv. And of course, you can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss Tech News Today. That's our morning show tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.